Hey, what's going on, everybody? Wanted to uh, share a couple things with you today that I've been studying and kind of uh, thinking about quite a bit. Um, I've watched a bunch of videos that uh, Wayne Bergeron has done, basically clinics and workshops that he's done. And uh, that's been one of the nice things about this pandemic is a lot of these guys that normally wouldn't really have time to do much in the way of workshops uh, now <laughs> have the time to do clinics, although I'm glad to see that coming to an end soon and ready to hear these guys play. But uh, Wayne has said something in several of these uh, workshops that he's done, and I've probably listened to a half dozen or more. But in the last year especially, I've heard him talk about a couple of things that I don't recall hearing before. doesn't mean he hasn't said it before or whatever, but I just don't recall hearing it. And I shared in a previous video how he had kind of used the analogy of thinking of your lips and your embouchure of forming that aperture and thinking about that aperture the way an oboe player would think about their reeds. And in a video before, I asked you to kind of think about that. Think about the way that an oboe reed is shaped and how it's kind of diamond shaped. You know, it's kind of the aperture of that oboe reed. Aperture, of course, aperture means opening. So that aperture is this diamond-shaped opening and how you would never have an oboe player or bassoon player uh, think like, well, in order to start my sound, I'm going to just squeeze that <laughs> aperture closed and then blow hard enough to blow it back open again. They would never think that way. They, the thing is the aperture is open when they start and then they're forming their embouchure around it while keeping that aperture open and then vibrating the reeds as their air passes through it while maintaining that open aperture the whole time. That's kind of a big deal. So that might be something that you might need to, what Greg Spence says, have a coffee moment over. I know it was for me. I think for a lot of us, I like a lot of people, was playing all the time with kind of closing my lips together because we, how many times have you heard to form your embouchure, say the letter M and then put the mouthpiece up and blow and buzz like that. But we've all heard, seen enough of the, of the demonstration where if we do that into our trumpet, that's the sound we get or we get some sound related to that. That's not a great sound. So I kind of have a moment to think about that. That aperture stays open, like the oboe players read. I'm trying to get it where my camera. Hey, that's actually a pretty good angle. Uh, and then you're passing air through it, and the reed is vibrating without closing. We don't have to vibrate by having the lips open and close. They just have to put vibrations into the air. Take like a big bucket of water, fill up your sink with water. You can create waves in the sink without pushing your hand all the way to the bottom of the sink. You can just do that and create waves. It's all sound is a sound wave. So they don't have to close. I don't know. Maybe you already get this. This is obvious to you. If it is, you're probably not watching this type of channel. But for me, that was a, a big light bulb moment. And now what I find when I play is I have to do two things. My air is helping to keep that aperture open, but I'm actually having to also develop the musculature to keep that aperture open while also tightening around it so that the pitch goes up. That's kind of interesting. So I'm firming up around here and I'm firming the aperture corners like that but I still have to keep that open. Jim Manley told me in my lesson with him, the lift's job, their primarily job, primary job is to let the air pass through them. That's their job one, not to vibrate. That's their second job. Their first job is to let the air pass through them. I don't know. Some of you may be hearing all this and being like, yeah, no kidding, but... I hear a lot of us, and, and I've been watching a bunch of Bobby Shu uh, clinics too. And Bobby has said he feels like the number one problem he sees in people that come to take lessons with him, they play too tight. And what he means by too tight, the way I'm taking that, is that this is too tight. This is too closed. That aperture's closed, and the sound coming out of it isn't free. 
It's that kind of sound. Like that. Versus something more open. So that's how free that air is coming out of there. Even on that D, it's open. So have a think about that. See what you see what you think. I've also been kind of experimenting. I shared talked about this before too, but we've all done some variation of like a pencil exercise or something like that. When Jim mainly had me do this in my lesson with him, he wasn't interested in doing it for like strength here. I have plenty of strength here. This isn't really an issue for me. But more the strength of keeping that open while I blow against it. And so he'd have me put the pencil in and put my lips around it, but keep them open enough where air goes around it. So I'm firming up while at the same time holding them open. And if you want to work on your teeth alignment and pivots and stuff like that, the way Bobby talks about, you can just work on keeping the pencil up or straight or out or up. Really pretty interesting. So maybe watch this again. Go watch some of the videos that Wayne's done. I've, he, I've just heard him do it in this clinic that he did for West Music. He did another one for the he did a, the Long and uh, Long and McQuaid uh, Music Store did a video for them, and um, he mentions both those things specifically, the shape of the oboe reed and how, you know, no reed player, not just an oboe player, but no reed player would think like, well, yeah, I'm going to get my reed on and get the ligature and get it all ready, and I'm going to put it in my mouth and just clamp down with my mouth so the whole thing shuts down. That's not how it works. These are our reeds right here. That's our reed. Now, don't get me wrong. I still like lip buzzing. I still find some of that stuff really useful for certain applications and certain times, but it's not how we play the trumpet. I think many, many of us know that. How we lip buzz is not how we play the trumpet. How we mouthpiece buzz is not how we play the trumpet. Doesn't mean it's not a valuable practice. Doesn't mean there's not a reason to do it, but it's not, not how we practice. It's my AR resonance. I am an AR resonance dealer, by the way. Awesome stuff. Okay, anyway, have a think on that. Let me know what you think. Bye.